Welcome to the Lack of Plants UFC 132 fight preview and um, and picks. I'm Ryan. This is Jeremy. We're going to be going through the card, making you letting you know what our picks are, and uh, yeah, letting you know a little bit more about the fighters. Um, starting, of course, first with the lovely free Facebook fights. We've got uh, one, two, three, four fights for free today on Facebook online. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I watch it on my uh, on my big screen, and I get a beautiful HD feed. It's just yeah, it's really you know, nice. You got, I mean, the best idea the UFC's had in the last while was putting these prelim fights out there for us to see. First on Spike TV, and now on Facebook. I mean, all you got to do is have a Facebook account, like the UFC, and you can watch you know up to six or seven free fights before the event even starts. Yeah. I mean, you got to like that. Yep. Um, opening up the card, we've got Jeff Huglin versus Donnie Walker. I'm looking to take the vet, Jeff Huglin. I think he's gonna his experience is gonna pay off. Yeah, you know, I mean, this fight, who really knows, right? These are two UFC newcomers. It could really, you know, it could be a surprise either way. Um, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm gonna have to lean towards the veteran as well, Huglin here in this fight. But uh, you know, don't be surprised if if uh, Walker finds a way to make this, uh, you know, his coming out party. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got Anthony Ninjakwani versus Andre Winner. I'm picking Anthony Ninjakwani. I think his Muay Thai is going to take him. You know what? We're going to agree on this fight as well. Uh, I like Ninjakwani a lot. You know, I'm a winner fan as well, but I think that his striking against Seaver, you know, kind of showed that, you know, there are some holes in his game, and unless he's really picked that up in the last couple of months, Ninjakwani is going to, you know, pick him apart and stand up. Yep. And next we got Brad Tavares at Aaron Simpson. I'm looking for Aaron Simpson, the uh, former Arizona State wrestling uh, coach to probably wrestle his way to a boring decision. You're probably right. I'm not totally excited for this fight, but, you know, it, hey, you know, I'll, I'll take any free fight, really. Um, I'm thinking Simpson probably is going to control this fight. Tavares could, you know, find a way to make this his fight, but uh, I'm thinking Simpson is going to, you know, grind out, wrestle his way to a decision, too. Yep. And then cleaning up the Facebook fights, we've got which a, a fight which I think should have been on the Spike TV card at least, maybe even on the main card. You've got two top ten uh, bantamweights and Brian Bowles, Takei Mizugaki. I think I think it's gonna they're gonna have a barn burner. I think it's gonna be a good fight. I'm taking Bowles for the win, but uh, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun for those however minutes it lasts. Yeah, I mean this this is gonna be an exciting fight either way. Uh, I'm excited to see this one. Brian Bowles is is a tough guy, you know. Uh, I got to agree with you on this one as well. I don't think Mizugaki really has too much of a chance unless he's able to somehow find a submission or something from the ground. I think he's going to be on his back a lot, and I think Bowles is going to be throwing bombs from the top. Yeah, and uh, yeah, should be a good one. And then, now we got Spike TV lot, getting into a lot more homes. I read somewhere Spike TV's in 90 million homes in the United States alone. Jeez. I mean, there's a lot of pair of eyeballs if you watch a fight. I think... Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be a good time. Got two good fights, different fights. You've got, um, you know, real grapplers, grapplers' dream, and George Sotiropoulos versus Rafael dos Anjos. Uh, George Sotiropoulos, uh, Jean Jacques Machado, black belt. I'm pretty sure he's uh, been working extensively with Eddie Bravo at Tenth Planet Jiu Jitsu, working the rubber guard. Um, and then you've got Rafael dos Anjos. Um, he trains under the inventor of the hat guard. And uh, so, if, I mean, if that's not heritage, I don't know what is. Um, I'm looking for George Sotiropoulos to take control of this fight's standing, bring it to the ground on his terms, move to mount pretty quickly, and, and I think he's going to take home an arm early in the fight, probably first round. Yeah, you know, it, it, I'd love to go against you here at some point, but I don't think Dos Anjos really has a chance at beating a guy who's as good submission-wise as George Sotiropoulos. Don't get me wrong, Dos Anjos, he's a really, really sick submission guy as well, but I like to think that Sotiropoulos is one of the top, uh, you know, jiu-jitsu guys in the UFC, uh, not just the lightweight division, and uh, you know I like this guy to either find a submission somewhere in this fight, or at least you know stay on top long enough to take a decision. Yeah, and then that leads us right into guaranteed fireworks with Melvin Guillard, Shane Roller. I yeah, I think these are going to be mostly one-sided fireworks from Melvin Guillard. I think the only thing uh, Shane Roller's got going to shoot is maybe a double, maybe a single, which I think is going to be hugely unsuccessful. I think uh, Melvin Garrett's got the hips, the strong hips, the fast hips to uh, to sprawl out of that, and um, 
really take this one home. You know, Gallard's always had, you know, heavy hands, really good striking. But the thing that a lot of people are forgetting is he's, he's an incredible athlete, too. You know, this guy's one of the hardest guys to take down in the UFC, bar none. And, you know, if that's Roller's only chance is to get this guy in the ground, it's not even that good of a chance. Gillard is probably going to knock this guy out in the first round, if not the second. And you know what? That's probably why they got him on the, on the spike, uh, you know, prelim card, to have him there, get some excitement out of the fans, and have some people who aren't going to buy the, or weren't planning on buying the event, buying it at the last minute after seeing what Gillard's going to do to this kid. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea to put him up, put him first up for the... Uh for the pay-per-view, and uh, I think there's going to be fireworks. I'm looking for a second-round TKO, probably off of the takedown, coming around with the punches on the face to the uh, as, as yeah. uh, Roller's trying to shoot in on a single or a double. Yeah, you know, postured up, maybe even from his, from the feet, ground and pound victory. Yeah. I don't think there's any way that, that Gallard loses this fight. I mean, you know, as good as the main card is, this fight has all the tools to be much more exciting than at least, you know, the bottom two fights starting with Dennis Seaver against Matt Wyman. Yeah, I um this is one of those fights. I mean, I would have I would have put Brian Bowles and Takeda Mizugaki on the main mm -hmm. card over this fight. I think that um, I mean, Dennis Seaver and Matt Wyman are both good established lightweights. But that that's kind of it, you know. Mm -hmm. Seaver's making a case for for perhaps getting into title contention, beating Sauteropolis went went a long way to that, beating Seaver, finishing C or sorry, finishing Weaver. Winner, Andre Winner, finishing mm -hmm. Andre Weber. Winner was, I think, a really good good step towards that. But I don't know. I just, I just don't think that this is this is the number one. I don't think that this is a better fight to have on the paper. Not card. at all. I mean, I like to think that that you know, as long as Melvin Gillard wins his fight, he's going to be thought of as you know a better lightweight than both of these guys. He should be higher up in, in title contention than either of them, regardless of what happens in their fight. Uh, Dennis Seaver is a slight favorite here. He's definitely a favorite in in terms of the stand-up against Wyman. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I like Wyman. I think he's probably going to be able to find a way to take him down and stifle that, that striking. And uh, you know what? I'm going to go with Wyman uh, by decision in this one. Yeah, I think, that, I think that if it's an ugly fight, Wyman's going to take it. But if this is a really good fight, I think that means that Dennis Seaver's lit him up on the feet and maybe, like he did with Winner, softened him up for a rear naked choke or, or even an arm bar or, or even a guillotine. Um, I, I see him hurting Wyman standing and then Wyman shooting a desperation takedown and Seaver either landing more strikes and finishing it or, or using that, that weakness to, uh, to secure a, a submission. Mm -hmm. um, next fight, bit of a pick em fight, you know. There's no clear favorite in, in, in terms of the betting. Uh, it's Carlos Condit, Dong Young Kim. You've got, and it's another one of those fights where if it's an ugly fight, Dong Young Kim's going to win it. If this is a really good fight, chances are Carlos Condit's taking home the W. That's right. I mean, both of these guys are really tough welterweights. Um, you know, Carlos Condit has a couple of really nice, spectacular knockout uh, victories of late. And Dong Young Kim has been kind of quietly running amok of the welterweight division for a couple of years now. You know, the only loss he ever had was overturned. Um, the problem is, you know, next to GSP, he's the most boring fighter in that division. Uh, I like to think that Dong is going to take him down, you know, wrap himself around him like he likes to do, and hold on to Condit until, you know, the buzzer rings and he gets himself a, a decision victory. I think that's the way it's going to go. But you never know with Carlos, Carlos Condit. He's a tough guy. He's got heavy hands. You know, and he's an all-around fighter. Yep. I um, I agree with you there. I think um, I think Dong Young Kim is going to grab a hold of him. Take him for a bit of a ride, maybe a couple of judo tosses, and lay and pray for, for a decision. Mm -hmm. And I I think this is going to be an ugly fight, and I think Dong Young Kim's going to take it. Yeah, I think you're probably right. And you know what? I think I think uh, your favorite fight is coming up next. Uh, Ryan Bader, uh, you know, has been given the task of getting rid of Tito Ortiz from the UFC, finally, hopefully once and for all. Yeah. What do you think of this one? Well, I think it, first of all, I think it's astonishing that Tito Ortiz still has a job. I mean, he mm -hmm. hasn't had a win since 2006. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. He hasn't had a win since George Bush was in the middle of his second term. Um, and that win was against Ken Shamrock. So, yeah, I, I just... Does that count? I, I, it shouldn't. It definitely shouldn't. I think Ryan Bader's going to take this. I think Ryan Bader's going to knock his gigantic head off. I think that, um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be competitive. I think that... Uh, 
I think, and this has got to be Tio Ortiz's last hurrah in the UFC. I mean, I, I see him taking some big money fights in some other promotions. Probably not Strike Force. Maybe, you know, maybe a big fight in uh, in Hawaii for the new Pro Elite series. He may go to Japan, try to get a get a big money payday out there if they ever have any more big money paydays. But uh, but I think this is a swan song in the UFC. I think this is this is going to be finally the uh, door hitting him in the ass on the way out. Yeah, I think it's about time. You know, Ortiz, he's he's a dinosaur, right? He roamed the UFC years ago, and he you know he had his way with the fighters that they handpicked for him to fight against and defend his belt against. Um, you know, it's a different it's a different game now. Fighters are a lot better, and there's no way that Tito is going to be able to, you know, establish himself as one of the best. And so we can't forget Tito Ortiz is also a liar and a cheat. That's true. Yeah. You know, we can't say that enough. No. I liar like Bader cheat. by TKO first round, maybe second round if Tito's lucky. Yeah, I, I think I think we're both pretty safe there. Mm -hmm. And then this is the only other fight that we really disagree on. You've got Vanderlei Silva versus Chris Lieben. Vanderlei Silva is the legend. You know, he's his history uh, and record speaks for itself. But on the other hand, I think Chris Lieben is the younger, fresher fighter. I think that I think that Chris Lieben's going to win. What I expect to be a really good, interesting mixed martial arts fight. Yeah, it's I, it's tough to think that this isn't going to be fight of the night. These two guys like to stand and trade, and you know what? They both have granite chins. I'm a huge mark for Vanderlei Silva. I have a lot of trouble betting against him, and I like to think he can get it done in any number of ways. But you know what? Um, Brian Stan showed that you can knock out Chris Lieb, and it can happen, you know? And uh, I'd like to think that Vanderlei finds a way to knock him out Maybe in the third round, because I think these guys are going to be, you know, slugging it out for a long time before somebody is ready to drop. Yeah, and I mean, I see this fight playing out a little bit differently. I see, I see this fight going to the ground. I see them rolling against the cage. I see them trading shots, standing. I see this being a really true mixed martial arts fight, and um, and I think in that, I think uh, Chris Lieben's probably going to catch um, Vanderlei Silva against the cage, hold him there land a couple of shots, weaken him, and then get the TKO stoppage on the ground. I'm looking probably second round. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not happy to see it, say it, but but I just think Levin's going to take the win. That being said, Vanderlei Silva wins this fight. I look for him to get a middleweight title shot sometime very, very soon. Yeah, you know, they can sell that one that one really easily. Anderson Silva, Vanderlei Silva, you know, they used to be buddies. I don't think they're too friendly anymore. That'd be pretty easy for the two of them to get up for that fight. You know, and that's going to bring us up to the main event, which is the first time that the Bantamweight title in the UFC is, is fought for, is defended. Dominic Cruz, the champ, is taking on Uriah Faber. What do you think in that fight? Well, um, I think that Dominic Cruz is probably going to... I mean, he's... I think Dominic Cruz has gotten a lot better since their first fight than, uh, than Uriah Faber has. In fact, I mean, Uriah Faber, Faber has frankly not looked great over his last few fights. He squeaked out a decision against Eddie Wineland, and 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 I think he got into this title shot pretty much on name value alone. Yeah, he does that, you know. Yeah. I'm looking for I'm looking for Dominic Cruz to do the same point getting um, style to, to really win a five round decision. Um, I don't like to say it. I don't like watching Dominic Cruz fight. I think that I think that he fights to win five round fights. I don't think he ever uses the techniques that he has to finish a fight and um and that's why i just hate to pick him but i think he's got the technique i think he's gonna win it yeah i gotta agree with you i think dominic cruz is gonna you know it might not be the most exciting fight out there but he is going to retain his title i think pretty boy faber is you know similar to ortiz in that he was a lot better years ago and uh you know this it could be his time to maybe just take a walk away from the sport yeah on the the only positive i see coming out of this is Uriah Faber loses, and we get to see a Uriah Faber, Miguel Torres, dream match, main mm -hmm. eventing, probably either a spike card or a versus card or maybe an eye on sports card. You know, one of the one of the pay or one of the free TV cards. I see. Uh, I, I think that could just be glorious. That's right. So I hopefully think, Faber loses, and we can see that fight. Yeah, maybe even Uriah Faber, Miguel Torres, tough. Ooh, I think that would be a good Not season. Not a bad idea either. Yeah. So this is our preview. That's uh, the Lack of Pants blog. Look for us to uh, to do a, a review once uh, once the card's all said and done sometime early next week. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. Thanks.